Hello everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio and welcome back to session two of this Fufu the Bun tutorial. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna do several things. We're going to work on the lettering. I'm going to use masking to make my letters, but I would probably recommend that it would be a lot easier just to paint them on. But I was just thinking that maybe I wanted my lettering light, so I just was giving myself that option. But later I went in and just painted over all that. So I really didn't need to use the masking, but if you want to learn about how to use masking to do lettering, this is the tutorial for you. But I'm also going to do a little bit of wet and wet painting for the rest of the bucket. I'm going to add some jewelry, so be sure to check out my video about what jewelry is. But uh, basically, we'll be adding some whiskers and some other little details to finish off this painting, take off the tape. I'll give you a few tips about how to safely take off tape and how I sign it, what tools I use for that, and we will finish this up. Also remember, I do have links down below for a lot of the art supplies that I used. And if I forget to include anything, just message me. And I always love to hear from you guys in the comments. And I love to hear questions and your own experiences. So please do feel free to share below. And I always answer my comments. So I'll see you there too. All right, let's get started. All right, now I'm just laying out my lettering so that I can plan. And I'm going to paint Hoppy Easter on there and really, really, you're not probably even going to be able to see it, very light lettering so I can see where I need to put my masking. I'm going to use masking. All right. My painting has dried. I've got everything nice and dry. And next I'm going to put on the masking. And for masking, I just use an old rigger. Uh, but for this, I'm actually going to use the paintbrush that came with this paint set. I don't care much about it. It's a cheap brush. And what I do is I dip it in water, scrub it on the soap, get the point really nice and pointy, as you can see me doing with my fingers. And the soap protects the bristles of the brush from the masking. You never want to let masking dry in your brush. You always want to let masking dry on your painting before you paint over it. What I did was I went online and just found some nice writing that already said Hoppy Easter and I just kind of looked at that writing to figure out how to do the script for this painting. And just take your time and approach painting these letters as if you were painting anything else that you have to look at the reference carefully and just replicate what the reference tells you to do. So when you see a, a thinner line, you don't use as much pressure. When you see a thicker line, like on the down strokes especially, your lines are in general going to be thicker. And then you use a really light hand between the letters when you're connecting them. And if you break the line, that actually I think looks pretty good. So don't worry about it because this is a more lighthearted painting, so don't worry if you make a few mistakes. And in general, when you're doing calligraphy, the down strokes are thicker, and then the rest of the strokes are a lot thinner to give each letter a little bit of interest and variety. I would suggest that you add a little bit of cream consistency paint to your masking, just a little, so that you can see what the heck you're doing, because it is very hard to write when you can't see what you're writing. And be sure to clean out your brush every two minutes so you don't get any masking drying in your brush. So I put clear water over everywhere inside the basket so that can, I can just drop in paint and it will blend itself by itself instead of me having to blend it. That's the beauty of putting clear water first. The paint kind of spreads out on its own and softly diffuses so that you get really soft passages and uh, gradations from dark to light. Because on the left side, our left, of the bucket I'm going to keep it light because that's the light side where the light is hitting it and on this side that I'm working on now it's going to be darker so this side will be darker and because I'm painting into onto wet paper so this is a wet and wet technique it will all blend and merge nicely and have no weird hard edges and so I the bottom of the bucket is going to be a little darker and the right side of the bucket is going to be darker but you do have to get enough color over 
at least all the letters for the letters to show. So again, I'm using my typical mix of just blue, purple, and a little bit of yellow to gray it down so it's not a screaming purple. I wanted this to be a muted painting. And one of the reasons why I wanted it to be muted is because I wanted the bunny ears to really pop and they sure do. So where the paint is darker, it's going closer to cream consistency. Then I'm dropping in the, the glistening. This is the glistening stage where it's pretty hard to make cauliflowers at this stage. So you don't have to worry too much about getting too much water in your brush too watery of paint, it, it won't cauliflower at this stage because we're still in the glistening stage. I got it wet and then promptly started painting. And you'll have to be more careful as it dries to not use too wet of paint because we don't really want cauliflowers in the bucket. That just wouldn't look right for this style of painting. And I paint carefully around some of the details in the handles just to add a little bit of jewelry and to add a little bit of realism to give the illusion of realism. If you just paint a few details and then make everything else kind of impressionistic, it will trick the viewer's brain into thinking that it's a more detailed painting than it really is. And of course the inside of the bucket is darker, so I use more cream consistency paint there. And then I'll go in and get even thicker paint and add a little bit thicker paint to make it even darker in some spots to create depth and to make it look like that bucket is deep. There's a hem there and I'm going to dot at it to kind of soften that edge so it's not stilted looking. Use, you can use your finger to push paint around and soften edges and make things look more impress impressionistic, loose, painterly, whatever you want to call it. Remember to get shadows under the bunny's paws and that also helps pop out those adorable paws. And when you're painting around the paws, be careful to get the rounded contours of each toe because that adds a lot to the cuteness quotient of this painting to get the cute little rounded arcs of each toe. So I paid careful attention when I was painting that part of the painting too, to paint carefully around the toes. Getting some thicker paint over there. You can see, by the way, it's sticking to my palette, how much thicker it is. And then did you see how I rolled my brush to get a really nice point? I rolled my brush on the palette to get a really nice point in my paintbrush so I could paint little details. Now my my paper is starting to enter the buckling stage, isn't it? The, the paint and the water is absorbing into the paper, allowing me to use cream consistency paint and get soft but good details that hold their shape, like the little line that I just painted under the paws to create a shadow, a small shadow under the paws, which stays soft, but it still holds its shape of just the thin line of shadow that I painted under the paw. And I'm doing that too. I've still got my masking on and I'm painting thin lines of shadow on one side of the lettering to kind of pop out my letters. I just felt like my letters were gonna um, disappear too much. So I continued to add details on them until I felt like they popped out enough. And here I'm just adding like a shadow uh, under the lettering and I, I really think that helps pop them out and again the paper is still wet so these shadows will be nice and soft. I'm using cream consistency paint on paper that is entering the buckling stage so be careful to make sure your brush does not have any drippy water in it and that you uh, mush it onto like a rag or paper towel and then pick up paint and make sure that paint is cream consistency so that you're not getting cauliflowers when you put in some of these details. Now I've let the paper completely dry. Everything's very dry, so it's safe to take off the masking. And I think I've pretty much gotten the highlight where I want it and the basket where I want it, so that's how I know I can take the masking off. I'm going to put even more highlight in the Hoppy Easter with bright pink lettering. I'm just using that brush that came with this little set. And I am going to work on putting some whiskers in. And so 
So I'm activating my gel pen by writing on my hand to get it activated. And but I thought the little whiskers coming out above the eyes looked really cute. This is some more of the jewelry. If you guys haven't seen my jewelry video, be sure to go check that out. It's in my watercolor basics playlist on YouTube. And if you get like a little dot of ink, you can just kind of smudge it with your finger with these before they dry. I was getting like a blob of ink when I first put the pen to paper. And so then I would just kind of uh, take my finger and swipe at it to make it a longer, thinner line instead of a blob. And that seemed to work well. And here I'm just using about T consistency paint to put in very delicate, tiny little whisker dot marks on his upper lip. I was splattering a little bit more hot pink on top of everything to have nice fresh splatters because the ones that we first put down got painted over so many times that they became really subtle. Here's my Food Nasuke Tombow calligraphy brush because I'm gonna do some little lines. With these calligraphy pens, you can push to make the line a little thicker. And if you lighten up the pressure, it makes a thinner line. And in general, when I see someone do a line and wash technique, I think it looks really good to get some parts of the line thicker and some thinner. I don't think I remember to do that here, but that can really make it look uh, really professional too. And another thing you'll notice I do is I break the line so I don't keep the same straight line like the whole way down the side of the left side of the bucket. You notice I made a break. And that just adds interest somehow that's just more aesthetically pleasing to not just have straight flat lines everywhere that are exactly the same. You want variety in edges, you want variety in line. That is a true rule in every painting and it's true here too. So you don't wanna to overdo too many lines because then it'll start looking too stiff. But I chose some of my favorite little curves in the face and the ears and just put a few lines here and there and made sure I broke my line, kept the lines interesting. Another way to add interest to the line, like I said, is to push harder and make your lines thicker in some places and thinner in others. Adding some more eyelashes there too. You cannot have enough cute eyelashes on a little bunny. And I'm gonna put a few little uh, pen lines in here too to really pop those letters and make that my O just I thought it looked too much like an A, and I definitely wanted that to look like a hoppy Easter, not a happy Easter. So I connected my O and made sure that it looked more O-ish <laughs> with my calligraphy pen. And your letters will have different needs because at this point of the painting, your painting is going to be different than mine. So you kind of have to make a judgment call yourself what uh, your painting needs and where you need your calligraphy lines and what you think will look good for your painting taking off that scotch magic tape, which seemed to work great for me this time. Remember, if you're not using Arsh 140 pound cold press or some other high quality paper, you, you have to be really careful when you take your tape up and you might wanna use a hair dryer to warm up the tape so it does not pull up your paper as you're taking off the tape. Again, I signed my name with my Funisuke Tombow calligraphy pen. You can sign with watercolor paint. All right, Fufu the Bun from Instagram. Thank you so much for, again, for providing such an adorable reference. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm trying to make it a more frequent event for me to make these tutorials that are only an hour or less so that nobody gets too overwhelmed, including me. <laughs> I will talk to you all next time. Bye.